Dear students, now I'm going to talk about a new secondary structure besides the alpha helis and the beta sheet. This one is called a loop. You know that the alpha helices and beta sheets are the secondary structures and are formed as a result of hydrogen bonding between the backbone C terms and N terms of a protein. Now, if a protein backbone is forming alpha helices and beta sheets, then there are certain regions within the backbone that are not participating in the alpha helix or the beta sheet formation. What will happen in such a case to those portions? Will they remain unstructured or will they take form of some other secondary structure? In most cases, such portions of the backbone they organize themselves into loops. So these loops end up essentially joining the alpha helices and the beta sheets. Let me show you by example how this organization looks like. So if this is your protein backbone and there are these CNN terms along the backbone and let's assume that this portion of the backbone forms an alpha helix as well as this portion, while this portion forms a beta sheet. So if such a case occurs, then you can already notice that there is this region in between that is neither a part of the alpha helix nor the part of the beta sheet. So for such regions, we have to study the loops. How do these loops join the backbone. Let's see. So if you have an alpha helix that is there along the backbone of the protein and a beta sheet as shown here, then a loop can essentially be formed like that and connect these two. Therefore, you can have a loop connecting an alpha helix and a beta sheet. Moreover, such an exercise can be repeated and you can have multiple loops connecting multiple alpha helices and beta sheets along the backbone of the protein. So the important thing to note here is that the, these loops are formed by amino acids present in the middle of alpha helices and beta sheets in the backbone of the protein. Now another important property of these loops. So these loops as you can see here are of variable length shapes, sizes and this is necessary because along the backbone of a protein if some C terms and N terms are not participating in the formation of alpha helices or beta sheets then they need to participate in the formation of a loop and therefore loops can be long, loops can be short and it all depends on the amino acids and the side chains that are not participating in the alpha helis or beta sheet formation. So therefore, variability in length and conformation of these loops allows them to join alpha helices and beta sheets in a variety of ways. The characteristics of these loops are important. We need to know what is the function of these loops, where are they located exactly. So for that, let me share with you that the loops are mostly present on the surface of the protein structure. These loops, they contain active sites, thereby allowing the protein to interact with other proteins. Also, because these loops are flexible, they can allow the protein to take different forms and shapes. Note that the mutation rate of amino acids within the loops is much higher as compared to the alpha helices or the beta sheets. This is useful in a protein's life because the function of the loop needs to be preserved in, in whatever circumstances the protein arrives and therefore it may mutate but the function still remains the same. So in conclusion, the loops dictate the overall structure of the protein by bringing together alpha helices and beta sheets in various conformations and that they have 
a lot of 3D interactions and therefore they are there in the, on the surface of the protein. Now what we need to understand is whether the, the, these loops have a role in protein function and which amino acids are interested in formation of loops instead of the alpha helices or beta sheets.